How's it going guys? Welcome back to Blue Shift and welcome back to another Sunrider. Last time we left, it was the cliffhanger of cliffhangers, because Cassette Cosmos has struck while we were vulnerably exploring like what the Alliance was doing on like this refugee world. We've now been kidnapped. I can't think of anything worse that could happen to us. Like, we're a starship captain with a fleet of riders. Take us out of that element. What are we? We're just a soldier. And that's okay, but... This could be really, really, really bad. But, let's find out what happens. Captain, are you alright? Ugh. Yeah? Darn pirates. I thought they'd secured this habitat. Like you said, there's a half million people living here. Perfect place for Cosette's goons to hide. Steel gr grinded as the lock and the gate was undone. A burly looking guard bent into the cell. The boss wants to speak with you. Okay, we, we, we won't cause the trouble. Greska stood as well. Not you, just him. Do as he says, Lieutenant. Don't worry, I think Cosette intends to keep us alive. Use this as leverage. Understood, sir. Be careful. You too. I'll be back. Captain. My most favorite person in the world. Sit down. I get thirsty. Have some water. I don't like this. This is like going down the route of intense interrogation slash torture. Cassette passed her canteen to Shields. Shield type cassette. Ah, you. Cassette snatched the canteen away from him and took a gulp. You see? Shields took a sip. He gagged the liquid back out. The entire camp laughed. What's the matter, Captain? Water not pure enough for you? Ha ha ha. A lifetime of drinking water laced with Onsagite F's you up pretty good. Makes some of us go crazy. Baby's born with one eye, six fingers. Sometimes you vomit blood for no apparent reason. Wow, that sounds like a horrible, horrible thing. Dang, that's, like, that's ridiculous. Lucky for me, I just made me stop growing since I was 11. Oh, that explains a lot. Oh, that was really sad. Re like, really sad. Holy crap. Hmm, how old do you figure I am, Captain? She had shrugged. It's not the kind of it's not kind to guess a woman's age. Wise answer. What are you after, Cassette? As much as I would love to carry you into the nice little pieces and mail you back to your pretty little lover back on the Sunrider, you're worth quite a bit to me alive. Bounty hunting. Makes sense. And I always was more of a businessman than a killer. <laughs> You think it's funny? Your reputation precedes you. You've murdered too many civilians to claim you're not a killer. You attack unarmed cargo vessels. You execute the crew, steal their goods. How are you not a killer? Foreigners have been stealing Ungrisite for far more than I've been pillaging the galaxy. Our infants are born monsters. Our fathers die in the oil refineries. Our livelihoods are stolen from us. Are those responsibilities call themselves CEOs? Presidents, general managers, businessmen. So in our eyes, businessmen are as evil as, as pirates. Stop this cassette. We can help you. We can save Ungress. Oh, we're just supposed to believe the Alliance is here to help us, right? They just want us to give food and medicine. Oh my, what benevolence. What generosity. I'm going to start crying. Wow. <laughs> That's just the... Uh, oh, boy. Oh, it's like trying to sweet-talk a snake. I don't even know. Or, I, I, I don't know. Like, I can sympathize with her, but she's obviously a little screwy. Help us. Yeah, right. There for Angersite. Nothing more. Oh, yeah? Well, what about the medicine cruiser that just docked? What about all the food and water they distributed? Nothing but tricks. Don't think the Imperials have never attempted to deceive us. 
They offered us rights which never came, food which spoiled, technology which broke, fresh water that became tainted with ungracite and constantly refined over our homes. No, the only truth is that greed runs in the galaxy. That's actually true. Um, in a system where you have money, greed fuels pretty much everything. I mean, power, money, influence, it's gonna breed corruption. But we live in a good society, much better than it used to be. It's, just, it's not perfect though. And there are people who get taken advantage of. I mean, heck, you shop at Walmart, you're taking advantage of people in fact, they work in factories in third world countries, you know? Their conditions are nothing close to what they should be, but we take advantage of it because we can get cheap prices from them. It's depressing that we live on the backs of so many people, even if we unintentionally just are trying to do our best here. But, uh, it's the harsh reality of life. It shouldn't be that way. It doesn't mean we shouldn't try and change it, but first thing we have to do is realize that it's, that it's real. And so that this story, like any good story, reflects a lot more on what's real and what's true than we probably care to admit. I'm not one of them. I come from a neutral world just like yours. Actually, not far from here. Listen to me. I have the Admiral's ear. Just give me your demands. I can make amends. I seek independence from my world just as you do. We're in this together. Hmm. That gave her pause. It's too late for that, Captain. Independence or death? All Alliance ships out of Ongress. Uh, all Alliance ships out of Ongress within 48 hours. That's our only demand. Whew. You know that won't be possible. We'll hit them until they cannot bear it anymore. They'll have to burn every habitat and orbit around Ongress before they kill us all. And with each one of us the Alliance kills, our cause will only become stronger. Uh, that's also the, the flaw of fighting terrorists, is you tend to just create more hate when we fight. But you have to fight. It, it's a messy situation. Carlos is really striking a lot of chords today. Whew. You're, you're mad. Leave the children out of this. At least the children. Gossette whispers into Shield's ears. When I was a child... My own mother sold me to entertain Imperial soldiers overnight, just for a bottle of fresh water. Then, when I became a teenager, she made me pretend to be a child, merely because the markets for teens were saturated. Oh, gosh. I don't like where this is going. Supply and demand. She was a businessman, too. Don't presume you know everything, Captain. You know nothing. Cassette! I killed her like the woman she was, and I'll kill anyone else who gets in my way. I am Cassette Cosmos, Terror of the Stars, the byproduct of, of evil. Evil for evil. Nobody messes with me. Nobody! You're making a mistake. Ah, enough with him. Take him back to his cell. Soon, Captain, we'll find out just how much you're worth to the Alliance. <laughs> well, crap. There's not much else to say to that. That's, th this isn't even like something I can like brush aside as like slightly funny. This is this is a real this is a real deal right here, Captain. Hmm. Shields opened his eyes. How long have we trapped in there? I believe I might have found a way out. I found a piece of chipped cement in the ceiling. It wasn't much, but I managed to cut through most of my bindings. Don't do anything reckless, Lieutenant. The Alliance will come for us. You're injured, Captain. It's not going to let it's not going to let you stay here. This was my fault. I'm the one who brought you here. Steel screeched as the guard undid the gate. Hey you. The boss wants to see you. Alright. No, the girl this time. Shields look at Kariska with appreciation. Appreh or apprehension, I'm sorry. Don't worry, Captain. I can take care of myself. Kariska stood and walked over to the guard. 
Just as he turned his back, Kariska broke free and wrapped her bindings around his neck. Ooh, that was risky. She was grimaced as the guard's neck broke. Neck bones cracked like twigs. Oh my gosh! That's impressive! Come on, Captain. Let's get out of here. I keep shortening Captain. I shouldn't be doing that. It's only for our saga. Shields and Kriska duck behind crates as the gunman passes. Cassaz, this place locked down tight. Our safest bet might be to run for an escape pod. Oh my god. Ah! Oh. I cannot express how loud that was. Suddenly, a siren went off behind them. I think they just realized we escaped. Come on, we don't have much time left. <laughs> and where do you think you're going, Captain? Cassette. Men, surround them. Hmm. It's such a pity we have to keep you alive. But maybe I can cut off a limb or two to pay you back for what you did to my guard. After all, I never promised to return to the Alliance completely intact. Guess I drew a knife as two gunmen had held Chris Kriska down. Oh, this is getting bad. <laughs> so tall. You don't know what it's like being stuck like this until you've tried it yourself. <laughs> oh, I don't like where this is going. Suddenly a shot echoes through the station. One of Cassette's goons fell to the ground, and it's really loud. Jeez. Oh my gosh. Blinding lights flashed as flashbang grenades exploded around Cassette's men. Alliance soldiers stormed Cassette's encampment, guns blazing. Ah! Kill them all! Shields crawled over to Kriska and gunfire ranged overhead. Jeez. Are you alright? Fine, Captain! An Alliance Marine pick, picked Shields off of the ground. Kriska picked up a weapon and covered Shields back. Come on, sir! We need to get you out of here! Out of the corner of Shields' eye, he caught sight of something. No, wait! Hang on! The girl picked up Cassette's drop knife. No! Put the knife! Oh. Oh my gosh! Oh. Don't worry, sir. You're safe now. We'll get you out of here. Let me go, Lieutenant! We've got you. Don't worry, sir. No! Dang it! No! Debris splattered shields as the shanty was struck with a rocket propelled grenade. A family dressed in rags scurried from their home, their screams inaudible against the right, ringing in shields' ears. And the one in my ears, too. The eldest of the family did not make it in time, and was crushed underneath landing wreckage. Was it one of Cassette's men who had fired the shot, or one of the Alliance? Who are the bad? Oh my gosh. An empty-handed man lying on the ground in a pool- An empty-handed man lay on the ground in a pool of blood. A woman wept as she clutched an infant to her chest. Fall back! Remember this, Captain! This is what your friends from the Alliance seek to bring to Ongress. Freedom? Ha! Huh. I'll see you in hell, Captain. Fetch. <sighs> she also had his office, where he'd been held captive for at least 48 hours. It felt like an eternity had passed since he'd last sat in his chair. Admiral Gray spoke through the calm. Captain, you have my sincerest apologies for our security lapse. It was our responsibility to protect you during your inspection, and we have failed. Shields closed his eyes. Tell me this, Admiral. How many civilians died during my rescue? We do not have an exact figure. You've seen it yourself. On Ongress, the line between civilian and combatant is not clear. We even have some reports that the girls... As young as seven have been recruited to fight with Cassette's cutthroats. We did manage to neutralize 32 insurgents, however. Did you count the girl as one of them? I have no idea what you mean. I saw your men gun down a girl who couldn't have been more than 10 years old, all because she happened to pick up a little knife. Uh, I'm sorry, Captain, but urban fighting leads to collateral damage. This is a bit more topical than I thought it was going to be, because that's definitely not true. It shouldn't be true. 
Mitch. This is only the beginning. The people of Ungress will treat you as an occupier, not a liberator. You can offer them all the aid you have. You can promise them freedom and democracy. But as long as you mind their Ungressite, you will always be one of their enemies. <sighs> Very well, Captain. You've made your point. We shall conduct an internal investigation. I would not have it said that I allowed one of my men to gun down a little girl. An internal investigation? That's it? Yes, Captain. We've... We've got to do more. Captain, let me be frank with you. There are those in the Alliance who do not agree with what we're doing here. I saw some of those ads in the Progress Party we were, were running against me just earlier. They accused me of being some Emperor, of plundering Ungress for its oil. What's the only difference between an Admiral and the Vizicar? One of them's running the F4 office, they say. The Progressive Party feels, fears that I'll see the end of civil control over the military. And frankly, many voters do as well. If any negative press got out what we're doing on Ungress out, the Progressive Party may win this election. They'll shut down the aid project here on Ungress. Not only that, but we'll lose our only supply of high-grade fuel in the war. The consequences would be catastrophic, both for Ungress and for the war. You must understand. Word of this incident must be kept quiet. Flippin' heck. Screw you, dude. <sighs> no. If they were doing it right, they would give them liberty and freedom and then do a trade agreement. Still getting the boxes to the oil in exchange for protection from Pact. That's what they should have done. You don't have to try and make this one of two ways. It's either we control it or we don't. It can be you don't control it, but you are allied with them. Good grief. I promise. I will see to it that those responsible are dealt with appropriately. But it will all be handled by, handled by my office, nothing more. You want to cover this up. Screw him, dang it. Ah! It's a stupid, 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 stupid ideal that if you have to win a war, you have to do what it takes. And yeah, there are sacrifices you have to make. And there's things you have to do that are not desirable. But a cover-up to win a political maneuver? No. No. When action's taken, and even if the fault is not yours, you must say what happened. And when you are the one holding the gun, you are responsible for the exchange that occurs. On both sides, that's true. And when the victor is won, they must stand for what happened. And it's regardless of how justified you are, human life is worth enough to merit the truth and to merit a proper decision. So, you know what, screw this idea that we have to make sure that the military wins the election. That's so backwards and so wrong at so many levels. No, I'm going to the press. The truth must be told. Captain, your idealism is noble, but it's not going to deliver food and medicine for the people of Ungress. Neither is it going to fuel our ships. I saw. She was young enough to be one of your granddaughters, Admiral. Captain, in war, atrocities occur. Only when men fail to act. You. Every gray since the high admirality has dedicated their lives to serving the Alliance. So many of us have died to protect the Alliance's ideals throughout the galaxy. Only to see it torn apart by the squabbling politicians in the Solar Congress. I will not let them end me here. Not with all that we've accomplished. So now the question lies on your shoulders, Admiral. Are your ideals and the things you fight for worth enough to you for you to abide by your own rules? Or are you going to go backwards and do whatever you think it takes to make sure that you keep power? 
That's the real question. This has nothing to do with the innocence of Ongress. It's about you getting elected. Face it, Admiral. You become a politician yourself. You're going to bury this under the carpet just to score a few votes with the public. While innocent children are getting murdered, you'd rather play politics than stand for what's right. Boom! Mic drop! Thank you, son! We're out of here. Very well, Captain. You are right. I did not join the military to cover up any atrocities. Neither did my ancestors. Oh my gosh, he might actually listen to us. We are honorable people here in the Alliance. I will open a public investigation, as well as make amends with the Ungressonites. Thank you, Admiral. Now leave me. I must get busy. Yes, sir. Captain. Sir? You are a noble man, but if you are to survive this war, I know. I might have to become a horrible person. But screw it! I only have to, I'll only do that when I know I can accept the consequences. I couldn't accept those consequences. No way. Oh, please be Chigara. I need a little Chigara in my life right now. Come in. Captain! As your liaison officer, I offer you my humblest apologies, sir. It was in my responsibility to protect you during the inspection, and in that regard, I failed. I will accept whatever punishment you deem fit. At ease, Lieutenant. No, the inspection let me see a lot of things. Sir? I don't know. Alliance can't be trusted. More than packed. But at every single turn, they just seem so shady. Although the Admiral did seem to give in at the end and make the right decision, it was only because I told him I wouldn't let him make the other decision. And we have to stop Cassette. But part of me thinks that she's got a point. She's psychotic. But she has a point. I don't think the Alliance can be trusted, though. Gosh darn it, there are friends in this war, but ever since the beginning I've never felt like they were really on our side. Because that's crazy, though. I'm so... I don't know. I really don't know what to do here. I'm so just... It just makes me tired just thinking about it. Just like, tired of all this, like... Just crap. Of course we'll work with the Alliance. But I truly don't think I can trust anybody but myself here. I know it's taken a while to choose this, but... I think we can't trust the Alliance. I think that, like many other bodies, it's a creature of self-preservation first. And I don't think our interests, being what they are, line up with the Alliance's. Not truly. So I don't think they can be trusted. Captain, we've done all we can for Ongress. I do not know of any other nation in the galaxy who contribute more to humanitarian aid. The definition of a gift requires that you expect nothing in exchange, Kriska. The Alliance wants something from Ongress, something it can't get anywhere else. Tell me, what's the difference between Ongress and a dark world like Titania? Captain? Well, Ongress is located right in the travel lanes between Farpoint and Serra, while Titania is a dark world in the distant Normadon corridor. Further, Ongress is rich in natural resources. Whereas Titania is a little more than an icy rock. The Alliance never dispatched a single aid ship to Titania.
Captain, the Alliance has no intention of robbing Ongress. We can establish trade routes with the Ungressonites. Ungressians. Exchange food, medicine, technology for their Ungressite. We of the Neutral Grim have never wanted such things. There were countless times when Sarah was invited to, do, to sit in the Solar Congress. Each time, we turned it down. Had Sarah ever been a part of the Alliance, we knew Pact would never dare to strike us. But despite that, we chose to remain independent. Can you not believe that there are people in the galaxy who value their freedom, Kriska? <sighs> I do not understand, Captain. Now Sarah is under Pact occupation, and without our help, Ungress would become another dark world. Maybe one day you will, Kriska. Report to the commander. She wishes a detailed report of what transpired at Ungress. That'll be punishment enough for the security lapse. Understood, sir. Thank you, sir. You're dismissed, Lieutenant. You made some really good points. It should be up to Ungress if they can trade for their oil. Not forced on them. Then what, could, what would that do to the war? Like, what if that decision that I made just now, in the ideals of what I want to do, leads us to defeat? It's a tough call. Should we win at all costs? Is our cause better than Pact's? Like, ah, it's tough. Jeez, it gets deep. I love stories like this because of those questions. The questions that no one answers. Oh, jeez. Oh. oh. Captain. You killed me. <laughs> Shields jolted upright in his chair. He'd fallen asleep on his paperwork. I jolted too. Oh. <sighs> <sighs> oh. Shield rubbed his eyes and stretched his back. It makes me want to stretch my back. He went downstairs to the bathroom and splashed a handful of water in his face. His own reflection stared back at him. Did I make the right decision? I'm coming. Shield went back upstairs and opened the door. <gasps> oh! This is exactly what I needed! Captain! I heard as soon I, I heard, came as soon as I heard my shift ended. I was so scared when I heard he'd been taken prisoner. Oh! Can I just revel this for a minute? Oh, this makes me so happy. It's all right. I was hardly even gone two days. S still, d did they hurt you? Nah, nothing. The alliance couldn't patch up. It was all just minor bumps and scratches, that's all. C Captain, don't leave me ever again. <sighs> I don't want to, dang it. I was so worried, I thought I was going to faint. She just put his arms around Chigara. Don't worry, I'm alright. I'm alright. Oh. oh my gosh. They got away. Should I just shot him when I had the chance? Sir, we're getting an FTL transmission. A message? Put it through. Cosmos, how are things going? Piss poor. The captain gave us the loop, and the Alliance drugged itself drugged itself in the <laughs> The Alliance dug itself in deep. I'm relying you the battle plan. Study it carefully. Oh, I thought you guys had left us for dead after that whooping in the Alliance fleet gave you last week. This is a personal mission, shall we say. Lone wolfing? Such individuality from a red. Hmm. So, what's in it for us if we help you out? I can give you exactly what you've wanted all these years. Independence for Ungress once and for all. <laughs> Deal. See? We could have done that. We could have done that, and it would be okay. But no. 
Warp signature detected, Captain. It's another pack scout ship. Status. Hovering out of range. That's the 15th one this past week. Pack must be planning something. They know the most combined fleet state. Uh, they know most of the combined fleet stationed to Angus. Most likely, they want us to chase their scouts so a strike fleet can warp in and hit the alliance ships while they're refueling. Maintain our position. If Pack manages to slip a ship past us, they'll ignite the Angus being stored at our docks and wipe out the entire combined fleet. Holy crap! That sounds like a perfectly good plan to me. Hi, right, Captain. I feel like we're swimming in the middle of a minefield. We are, Lieutenant. There's enough liquid hunger tonight in orbit around the planet to blow us all the way back to Farpoint. Ava, any intel on our new commander? Vizicar Fortuna? He's quite young considering his position at the top of the packed chain of command. Despite his age, he's seen Arcadis' right hand man. Brilliant, just as he's deadly. He is a foe not to be trifled with. Crushing the enemy's commander, the enemy commanders on a capital offense, commander. Oh, <laughs> I got that now. I read that, but didn't compute in my head. Captain. <clears throat> also, I believe that one of our crew has encountered him in the past. Oh. I believe Asaga briefly met him when she was captured. What did she say? You can imagine. Oh, right, that guy. He was actually pretty good looking for a red. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Not quite helpful. Regardless, he's a far more fearsome foe than anyone we've encountered in the past. We should not underestimate him. Alright, thanks for the advice. <sighs> hmm. Well, that was... bracing. Hmm. You know what, we got a lot of good conversations ahead of us, but I think we're going to have to end that here. This was a really deep episode. I I think we easily could have moved forward, but I did spend a lot of time kind of sharing some of my thoughts. And I don't really regret that. You know, I don't like trying to make political videos, really. I mean, I did one when I thought something really unfair had been done to a fellow YouTuber. But I think this was almost a good chance for me to vent about how I've been feeling about the things that have been going on lately. I I think this is really sending a similar message this episode. Um, like always, I had fun. I hope you, you, you picked up on that. I love having to think and being forced in tough choices in a game and seeing the consequences. And that's part of why I love it so much. But... I want to make sure that you sit and just think about this for yourself. Not just what happened here, but what's happening in your life right now. Um, I'm not going to throw out a position or anything, because that really doesn't matter. What I do is what I do. That's kind of my thing. But what you do is important for you. And if there's anything I can do, making you think is probably the best thing I can do as a YouTuber. So, just just consider what happened here, the messages in the game, and compare it to how you feel about things in the real world. I mean, putting yourself in other people's shoes is the first and most important step in understanding somebody who's different. So just do that, and hopefully we can start finding answers instead of more blame and more pointing of fingers and more just sadness. It's been kind of a rough year, if you haven't noticed. Um, but I think that there's hope yet. I think there's a lot more good people than bad, and I think that we're going to be able to figure things out. We always do. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm excited to have some more normal conversations again, especially Chakara. Holy crap. This episode may have been one of the most like thought-provoking, but it also has the best scenes by far so far in a game. That was amazing. So, I hope you loved that part too. And until the next video or whatever you see me in, I'll see you there.